Power surges happen on a regular basis without you even knowing. But sometimes an external power surge is so strong that it can damage expensive electronics in your house, and that will definitely get your attention. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how this happens and also how you can install a device that can really cut down and even eliminate device damaging surges. So let's get started now. What's up guys, Adam here with another video on how to improve your home and property. If you enjoy learning how to's and DIY projects for around your home and you're new to the channel, then consider clicking that red subscribe button down below. And if you find the information in the video to be helpful to you, let me know by leaving a comment and clicking the thumbs up button. In this video, we are going to talk about and install a whole house surge protector. The surge protector I'm going to be installing today is going to be this Siemens FS140 whole house surge protector. Now, I mentioned earlier that surges can happen regularly without you even knowing about them. Many of them are originating in your house right now, and these are called internal surges. Anytime that something starts up like a refrigerator or an AC unit, these produce small surges to your other electronics. And over time, these surges will slowly wear down your other electronics to where one day they will just not work or even turn on. So this is one of the big reasons why many of your expensive electronics like computers and TVs are and need to be plugged into some sort of power strip surge protector. And these surge protectors can help with the other kind of surges as well, which are external surges. But if it's a big enough surge, many of the power strip surge protectors may not be able to protect your equipment. And we all know about external surges. They're the ones that often are caused by lightning, for example. And that's when the surge is strong enough to where basically it will just fry expensive electrical com components in one strike. Uh, many times it isn't just one item that gets destroyed either. It's multiple items that their circuit boards are completely destroyed. So this is where the whole house surge protector really comes into play. It's going to stop the surge at your main electrical panel, usually out by your meter before it even enters your home. So this video is not a sponsored video. I chose this particular surge protector just because I believe it's one of the better ones that you can buy based on its ratings. And it also has a feature that tells you when it has, to, has taken a big hit and needs to be replaced. So many of the other ones, they're not going to alert you when they need to be replaced and that could possibly leave your home open to a large surge when you think you're still protected. So all that being said, uh, there are a whole lot of surge protectors. So whatever one you're considering, just make sure to do your research to ensure you're getting one that can handle not just large surges, but smaller ones as well. So let's get started with our install and I'll show you the parts that we'll be installing today. All right, so this is gonna be pretty much all the parts that we're gonna need for this particular installation. It's not a super difficult installation, so not a whole lot of parts involved. But of course, we've got our Siemens FS140 whole house surge protector. And this particular surge protector already has all the wiring that you're going to need in order to connect this to your main panel. And all the wiring is already connected inside of the box to the surge protector itself. And speaking of this box, this box is rated according to Siemens website and their instructions, this box is rated as a NEMA 4X rating, which what that basically just means is it can be mounted indoors or outdoors. So you can put it outside and you should be able to feel pretty comfortable that the weather is not going to bother this thing. In fact, NEMA 4X is rated against a whole host of possible things that might be trying to get in. So according to the rating of this, it should have no problem being mounted outside. Now, if you don't have it underneath of an eave or some gutters and water is just cascading down on it constantly, then you might wanna think about putting it in another box. But for the most part, there's not a whole lot of situations where that's probably gonna come into play. So this should be good for mounting outside as well. And you're gonna to need to figure out what kind of conduit you're gonna use. Everybody will be different. I'm just gonna throw up a couple of 90 degree PVC elbows to run my wiring through. And of course I got a couple of three quarter inch terminal adapters. One will screw inside of the surge protector itself and the other will go into the main panel. 
and according to their instructions they recommend installing a 20 amp double pole breaker and this double pole breaker is made by GE and the reason you I bought a GE breaker is because it is a GE box that it's going in so buy whatever circuit breaker brand that matches your uh, particular brand of box for your main panel so if it's a GE buy a GE breaker if it's a Siemens box, then buy a, a Siemens breaker and et cetera, et cetera. So just make sure you buy a circuit breaker, the same brand as your box. So that's pretty much all for the parts. Now we can go ahead and get started with our installation. But before we start actually installing anything, we need to turn off the main power to the house. And once the main power is shut off, then we'll test it just to confirm that everything is in fact off. And once we've confirmed that, then we can go ahead and get started with the installation. So just to save everybody some time, I went ahead and mounted the box on the wall and ran the conduit and ran the wires through the conduit since everybody's situation is going to be different. So I'm getting all the insulation off of the wiring and I've gotten all of it off now. So we can go ahead and I'll start showing you how to install this then to this main panel. So this first wire I'm going to focus on is going to be the green ground wire and it's going to go into the ground bus bar. And the way that you can tell that it's the ground bus bars, you just need to look for if you see a bunch of bare wires with no insulation on them, you just see the copper. Those are going to be your grounds. So once you get it put into the ground bus bar, you can tighten it down, tighten the screw down on top of it. You want to make sure it's tightened down nice and tight. All right, so that does it for the ground. Now I'm going to focus on this white wire, which is the neutral wire. And that's going to go like the ground wire went into the ground bus bar. This needs to go into your neutral bus bar. So same thing as the ground wire. Once you've got it pushed through and in there, just tighten down the lug on top of it nice and tight. All right, so now all we've got left are these two black wires, and these two black wires are both gonna be your hot wires. And the two black wires are gonna go inside of that 20 amp double pull breaker I showed you at the beginning. And again, the instructions specifically say that they recommend using a 20 amp breaker. I've read where you can use a 30 amp or even a 40 amp double pull breaker, but since the instructions specifically say they recommend using a 20 amp double pull breaker, that's what we're gonna use. So. Those two black wires are going to go up in the bottom of this circuit breaker here. I don't know if you can see. I think you can. Those holes on both sides there, they're going to go up inside of there, one in each one. And then on the front, there are screws that will then tighten it down into place. So we'll go ahead and do that now. All right. So now that we've got these wires nice and tight down into this circuit breaker, you're going to take that circuit breaker and it's going to go in at a little bit of an angle with the bottom first. It's kind of like a hinge it goes on top of and then you just push it in and pop it up into place. And there you go. All right, so now that we've got everything hooked up, uh, we got our faceplate back on our main panel here. I got the main power back on to the house. I put the main power back on right after we got everything connected and this faceplate was put back on the main panel. And so all that's really left now is to test to make sure that everything's hooked up correctly and that this is functioning. Um, all we got to do is turn on this main or this circuit breaker here and we should get two green lights here and here. If there's anything wrong, we'll get some sort of an audible alarm uh, letting us know that something wasn't done right. So uh, let's go ahead and turn it on and see what we got. All right, so we've got two green lights lit up just like they should be. So it's letting us know that it has been hooked up correctly and it is ready for any surges. And if a surge does come eventually where uh, this thing does its job, it keeps the surge from entering into the house. Um, and it, it's going to let you know that it's time to replace it once it's no good anymore. These lights would diminish and you would get an audible alarm uh, that you can hear coming from this box letting you know hey 
I need to be replaced, you're not protected anymore. So uh, as of right now, everything is the way that it should be and we're now protected. All right guys, so that is really all there is to installing a whole house surge protector. So of course there could be some minor instruction differences depending on the surge protector that you buy, but for the most part, you're gonna be following these main steps for uh, the vast majority of them. Uh, now, if you aren't completely comfortable with installing this yourself or aren't familiar with electrical work, then definitely consider calling your locally licensed electrician and they will be able to take care of this for you. You can also call your utility company as many of them offer their own brand or kind of whole house surge protector and they can install it for you as well. I really believe that installing one of these is worth the peace of mind that it can save some of your more expensive electronics as almost everything you use now in your home is electronic and usually has a small computer or control board in it. Uh, most people probably don't consider that their fancy new oven or washer and dryer have really very sensitive electronics on them, but you do know the investment that it took to buy them. So it's not really a matter of if you're gonna have something in your house destroyed by a large surge, it's really more a matter of when. So protect your investments now. So that is gonna do it for this video. I hope you found it to be helpful and informative. If you did, please let me know by leaving a comment below and giving the video a thumbs up. If you enjoy how to's and DIY type videos like this one for projects around your house, then please consider clicking the red subscribe button down below I have a new how-to video coming out weekly and a bunch already that you can go check out now. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.